Here we go. Okay, so today we're talking about reaction mechanisms and the rate determining step. Okay, so so far when we've seen balanced equations, we think that's what happens. But honestly, what's happening is you're seeing the net overall change. Usually there is a series of steps that that reaction has to go through, and we call that the mechanism. Okay, and then the rate law is based on the rate determining step, or we're going to call it the slow step. Okay. So we're going to start off with this. This is a single step reaction, making, meaning there is no mechanism in place. So if I have a single step reaction, I can actually write the rate law from the balanced equation, and the coefficients become the uh, orders of the reactants, okay? The deal is, though, very few reactions are actually single step reactions. Most of them require a mechanism, okay? So they're very rare, so you might want to write that down. Very rare, okay? Most require a mechanism. Okay, so when I'm talking about a mechanism, it's going to be a series of steps, okay? And the reason that um, we do this is so we can see how the process works, because not always will your rate law match your balance equation, and it's because of the rate determining step, okay? Um, when we do have a reaction mechanism and we do have an experimentally determined rate law, they have to match each other, and you'll see that today when we're working a few problems. They do have to match each other, okay? <laughs> Um, first of all, a reaction can never proceed faster than its slowest step. The slowest step is also called the rate determining step. Um, sometimes that might be the first step in the mechanism, sometimes that might be the second, sometimes that might be the third or the fourth, it just depends. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about something called um, inter intermediates. And intermediates are things that during this reaction mechanism that might be produced, but they're subsequently used up in a, in a step further down. So they will not appear in the overall equation, or they will not appear in the rate law, okay? So if it's an inter intermediate, we do not include them in the rate law, and they're never in the overall balanced equation, because they're intermediates, they're produced, and then they're consumed. And then, of course, catalysts, we talked about when we were talking about the collision theory, catalysts are there to lower the activation energy, and so usually they'll start out as a reactant and end up as a product, because they're not being consumed in the reaction. For our purposes, we will not be including catalyst in the rate law. There are some rare occasions when we do put catalyst in the rate law, but that's above our pay grade in pre-AP, okay? So you won't see that in here. Um, but you will see sometimes a catalyst in a reaction, and you'll just have to label it that it's a catalyst, okay? And for our purposes, we're not going to include it in the rate law, okay? So, <coughs> excuse me. So here is an example of a mechanism. This got left out. That's supposed to be crossed out. <clears throat> so what happens when you are looking at a, a mechanism, the overall reaction is iodine plus hydrogen is going to yield two hydrogen iodide. Okay, But it doesn't just happen like that. So step one is I have to take that iodide, which is a diatomic molecule, right? And i got to break it up into its individual atoms. And then those individual atoms react with the hydrogen molecule and form this H2I. And then that H2I reacts with the other iodide, iodine atom that we produced in step one, and then it forms the 2HI. So what you do is you cross out anything that appears on opposite sides of the arrow, okay? So for the case of iodide, we have 2I produced in step one, and then in step two and three, we use up one of those I's. So they're on opposite sides, so they cross each other out, okay? And then the H2I that was produced in step two is subsequently used up in step three to form the actual product. So in this case, our intermediates, I'm going to run out of room, are the uh, I and the H2I. Okay? So when they cancel out, here's our overall reaction. Okay? That is the net overall change of what happened in that. Okay? But it's not actually what was going on when it was reactant, we had to go through these steps, okay? Because we have no experimental data, there is no way from here that we could determine what um, the rate determining step is, because we have no data to tell us that. So you either have to have some data to tell you that, and you could figure it out based on that, or, like you'll see on the worksheet today, it tells you slow step, fast step, okay? So it tells you that, okay? Um, but for this one, this is just taking you through the mechanism process, okay? Any questions on that? Does that make sense? Okay. The way you can tell the difference between an intermediate and a catalyst is an intermediate is going to be produced in one step and then consumed in a subsequent step. Okay, so it's going to be a product first, then a reactant.
catalyst is just the opposite. It's going to start out as a reactant and end as a product, okay? Because it's showing that it's not being consumed in the reaction. Okay, um, so here's an example of this particular um, mechanism. So when we are writing the rate laws for our mechanisms, okay, we are going to write the rate law individually for each step. And we're going to add them together until we get to the slow step. And then we're going to stop adding up, okay? So before we do anything else, what I suggest you do is you go find your intermediates because you don't want to accidentally write down your intermediates in a rate law, okay? So I'm going to, we're going to add these up, okay? So first of all, what appears on opposite sides of the arrow that I can cross out? N204, so we're going to say cross, cross. So those are our intermediates, so we can write that down here, okay? <coughs> now, there's something else we can cross out, but it's not actually an intermediate, and that is the NO2, but I can only cross out one of them because they're the same, they're on opposite sides. So that's going to leave one of those NO2. So the first step is our fast step. So if I were to write the rate based on just what the stoichiometry is, it would be rate is equal to K and the concentration of NO2. Okay? For the next one, I'm going to write that rate, and that is the slow step, so I'm going to add them together. It's going to be rate is equal to K, and then just CO, okay? The overall balanced equation is those two things added together, leaving out what you crossed out. So I have NO2 plus CO yields NO plus CO2. Still want to make sure it's balanced. It is, okay? We already <coughs> said what our intermediates are. Even though we crossed out one of the O2s, the, the NO2s, the fact that we ha still have one left, it's not going to be an intermediate, okay? So how do we know that NO2 is not... Because there's, <laughs> because there's one left. Oh, okay. Yeah. If I had crossed out both of them, then yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. All right, so the overall rate law is I'm going to add these two things together. So it's going to be rate is equal to K and then NO2 plus CO, Okay. We don't add the rate and the K because we know that a rate law is going to be rate is equal to K and then we have our concentrations, okay? So we're really only adding the concentrations, if you will, okay? This one happens to match our balanced equation, but that's not always the case depending on where your slow step is, okay? Yes? So is that multiplying the NO2 and the CO in the final rate? Well, we're just putting the, we're, basically we're adding the rate laws together, but the rate law itself is always multiplied the concentrations, yeah. It's just a way of us looking at it and seeing do the rate laws add up to what they're supposed to be, okay? And in this case, they have not told us what the rate law is, and we can determine it this way because we have a slow step, so we could do it that way. But if you're ever given data, you always use the data. The, the actual way to determine a true rate law is based on the data, okay? Experiment. It's determined experimentally. So if they gave you that this was the fast and the slow, they probably... Ex ex determined it experimentally to, to be able to see which has to be the slow step. Yes? So if we're asking to find this stuff, is it always going to be given, like, are we always going to be told which one's the fast and which one's the slow? Uh, no. no so we're find it. Not always. Most of the time in here, yes, but in AP, no. What they'll do is they'll give you a rate law or you determined a rate law, and then they give you a series of steps and said which one is the rate determining step or which one is the per correct mechanism and you use what your rate law is to figure that out. But in here, most of the time you're going to be given it. Or you might be given what the rate law is and you can figure it out. Okay. We're doing kinetics light. Not as light as before because we used to not do rate laws and we definitely didn't do reaction mechanisms. So I added it in this year so for those of you that are going to take AP, it'll make it easier. And y'all have like really... Uh, jump to that challenge. I've been, I've been impressed. Yeah. Okay. So here is another example. And this time, our slow step is first. Okay. So whatever we write down as our rate law, it, as the slow step, is going to be our rate law. Because once you get to the slow step, you don't add anything else in. Okay. So let's mark out our intermediates first. Because we don't want to accidentally include them. So where are our intermediates? Just that one. So that is our only intermediate in this case. So we're not going to include it anywhere. 
in our rate law. So we write the rate law for the first step, and it's going to be rate is equal to K in O B R 2. We're not going to write anything because once we're done with our slow step, we don't include anything else in the rate law. And basically that's because this is what's going to determine once this happens, this is going to happen so fast, like instantaneously, because it's there and it's the fast step. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. So let's write our overall balanced equation. I have NO on both of those, but they're on the same side of the equation. So what am I going to do? 2NO. 2NO plus BR2 yields 2NOBR. Still everything balanced, so we're good there. Uh, and then it says, what is the rate law? The rate law is what we wrote for the slow step. And this is one of those times where your rate law doesn't necessarily match your stoichiometry of your balanced equation. And that's because the, the slow step was first. Okay? So if the slow step's first, the rate law is only what you get after the slow step? It's just only for the slow step. Absolutely. The fast step's first, then you combine it? I didn't combine anything. Well, no, no, no. If on the last example? Oh, on example. Yeah, because the slow step was second, I had to write what the rate was for the... Because it's still up to that point. That stuff still has to happen. But then the rate itself is determined with the slow step. You just stop only yeah. And you'll see on your worksheet today, I think, that some, like the slow step's in the middle, then you stop and don't do the third one. But if the slow step is last, you include everything, except for intermediates, right? Okay. All right, so let's do this, where we're putting it all together. We're doing rate law, we're going to calculate it, and we're going to do all this stuff. I'm going to say this like three times, so hopefully you get this. This problem in the notes is a very important problem. Someone told me that this problem is really, really important example. So let's do this really important example in the notes. Let's do it. It's important. Okay, so first step is what is the order with respect to B? All right, so here's our reaction to B yields C plus D. Okay, and then it gives us our data, so we can determine that. So we'll just use experiment one, because, you know, it's right there. So we doubled the <coughs> concentration, and what happened to my rate? Uh, doubled. doubled. So if I double the concentration, and I double my rate, what order does that make it? Uh, first. first order. That doesn't... So then my rate law is rate is equal to K B concentration of B. Okay? Um, and then it wants us to calculate K. So just for grins, we usually use uh, experiment one, but let's just use experiment two. Keep it fresh. So rate over concentration of B. So that's going to be 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. That looks like a question mark. Molarity per second. Divided by 0.8 molarity. So my molarities cancel. So my unit is going to be second to the minus 1. So someone do that math for me real quick. 0 0.015. Okay, so there's that answer. That's my K. That's my rate constant. Remember, K is a rate constant. Um, and then it says, which of the following mechanisms correct, correctly justifies your rate law? And then it says... Those three little words, those are AP Chem words right there. Justify your answer, okay? Uh, because they never let you just pick one. you got to explain why you picked what you did, okay? So let's justify, okay? So, again, we're going to start with the, marking out our intermediates. So on, on A, what are our intermediates that we're going to mark out? E, okay? So right here would be rate is equal to K... B, and then we stop. So already, I think that's my answer, right? But this is not enough justification. I got to show why the other one is not. So in fact, the answer is A. But why is the other one not? Let's mark out our intermediates. There, we got an E, right? And A. Sorry. 
So our fast would be rate is equal to k b. Then our slow would be rate is equal to k and then b. So when I added those together, it would be rate is equal to k b second order, which does not agree with the rate law we determined experimentally. So uh, uh, it is not. The words that we would say is it's that is not consistent with the experimentally determined rate law. Okay. Right. Products never appear. Okay. Products, intermediates, or for our purposes, catalyst. Now, catalyst can. You won't see that in here, but I don't want you to go and say, oh, Miss Parker told me a long time ago, and then later on she lied. I didn't lie. I'm just not going to show you that in here. Yes? Uh, for A, why, didn't, why don't you do a second rate law? Because Cause it's the fast step. You stop at the slow step. Got it. Slop. Slop. Slop at the stow step. I said that. <laughs> Stop at the slow step. Yeah, I went to speech for a list when I was a kid, so sometimes all those S's in there really <laughs> give me a challenge. <laughs> okay, any questions? Oh, no, I'm not saying that. Okay, all right, end recording.